us. It will be largely virtual, but there will need to be um, a handful of people uh, monitoring vendor contracts and doing some of the uh, policy work and running this little shop. But it's, um, it's a business. It's not going to be a new state agency. It is not that the exchange coming into the exchange door uh, is not an entitlement program, meaning no one is forced, it's all voluntary, nobody's forced to be in. It's not a case managed type of a program the way we do with uh, welfare clients or people in the child welfare system. This is a business where people can come to buy insurance. Uh, whether it's an individual or whether it's a small employer. And we have four primary uh, customers that are going to be coming to this business. The first main customer are those 300,000 people that I already showed you. Those are people who are currently uninsured. They can't buy insurance on the individual market, either because they can't afford it or they're not eligible because they have a pre-existing condition. So they are our primary customers, people who are uninsured today who need to buy insurance and come to the exchange because within the exchange, if they're income eligible, they'll get a tax credit and a subsidy. So anybody can come to the exchange. If I were a lawyer in private practice and I was making you know, $700,000 a year and I'm currently buying my insurance in the private market, I can continue to do that if I want to. Um, or if I'm a small employer and I'm buying insurance in the private market with a broker for my employees, I can continue to do that if I want to. But if I want to get federal tax credits and subsidies to help me pay for my insurance, then I have to come to the exchange. So if your income is above that Medicaid line, that 133 that I talked to you about, if you're between 133% of poverty and 400%, which is about $88,000 a year for family of four, if you want to come to the exchange and you're in that income group, you're eligible for a federal tax credit to help you buy your insurance. If you're happy buying your insurance in the outside market, you just keep doing that. You don't have to do anything differently. But if you want these federal tax credits, you have to come to the exchange business in order to get the tax credits. So that's who the primary customers are. So the first customers are all of these individuals who are uninsured and need to buy insurance. Because remember, what happens in 2014 is another cornerstone of the federal health reform law, the most controversial part of the law, and that's what's called the individual mandate, where the federal government has said, by 24, in 2014, we all have to start having insurance. It's either got to be employer-based, it has to be Medicare, it has to be Medicaid, you have to buy your own insurance if you are doing that now. Keep doing it. If you don't have insurance and you can't afford it and you need help, you come to the exchange and we will help you buy insurance. And there will be people who can get exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, um, the whole health reform policy that the law is based on this fundamental premise that we're all going to have some coverage one way or the other. So. A lot, you can't say to people you have to go buy insurance unless you make some changes in the laws around insurance plans. So if you're going to make everybody buy, you have to make everybody sell. And that's what the pre-existing conditions are mostly about. So you have to say, also say to the insurance companies, if somebody wants to buy a policy from you and they can afford to do so, you can't deny them the right to do that just because they had cancer three years ago or acne when they were a teenager. They, they will not be able to turn you away any longer because you had a pre-existing condition. So the exchange is kind of this business where you marry up those two policies. You're, you're asking the, the insurance companies to change the way they do business. We're asking consumers to change their behavior. But you've got to put a place, there has to be a place for people to go. And there has to be a place where all of these um, tax credits and premiums can be managed for people so it's not too administratively burdensome and that's really what the exchange is all about. So the exchange has to do the, I told you, the first primary customer are these, all these uninsured individual people. They're either um, entrepreneurs, they have their own businesses, they work for a small employer who doesn't offer coverage or they can't afford the employer's premiums. The second main customer are small employers. 
Um, we have about 100,000 small employers here in Colorado today, and about 40% of them currently offer coverage to their employees. And if they're happy doing that and working, their brokers are good and get a good deals and good plans, they can keep doing that. There will still be a market outside the exchange to do that. But for the other small employers who can't afford to provide coverage, either because they can't find the right policy, they can't find a policy that they can afford to contribute to, um, they are, are also our primary customer for the exchange. We want to help small employers in Colorado who would like to provide coverage for their employees and have just not been able to do it. We think the exchange is a great way to bring choices to them and to their employees, affordable products, and then if their employees are eligible for subsidies because they're low-wage workers, they'll get a tax credit, and the employer will get a tax credit for their contribution toward the premiums. Then there's a secondary level of customers. So those are our main customers, those two, they currently don't have or offer coverage. But eventually people who are, if you are an individual and you're buying your own insurance in the individual market, you might want to check out the exchange for two reasons. You may be eligible for a tax credit based on your family size and income, or the exchange might give you more choices than you have today. The same with a small employer who's currently offering co coverage. Are there any small employers in the room who you provide coverage for your employees, but you can only provide to give them one choice? You pick one plan every year, and that's the plan they get. Anybody sound familiar to you, or maybe that was the situation you were in and went, when you were working, if you're not working any longer? So, um, so employers who are happy doing that, if they and their employees are happy, that they keep doing that. But if they would like to check out the exchange and see if they could offer their employees, they'll still make the same contributions, but by coming to the exchange, maybe they could offer their employees two or three choices of plans instead of just one. So that may be an advantage to some of the small employers in Colorado who currently offer coverage. But again, it's completely voluntary. Nobody has to come to the exchange unless they want those choices, they want the administrative help, and they want the tax credits. So the exchange has all those administrative functions. I'm not going to go through all of those um, in a lot of detail, but we obviously have to coordinate very closely with other programs like Medicaid to make sure people end up in the right house. I think about this as um, I, I have a friend in Winter Park who has three townhomes that they rent out for skiers and visitors and everything, and they all they have those adjoining doors between them like you do in hotels in case somebody wants all three townhomes or only one townhome. So no matter which house you come to, if you come to the county social services house, or if you come to the HIPAA Medicaid house, or you come to the exchange house thinking you want to buy insurance, or you may be eligible for Medicaid, or you may be eligible for something else, we have to, um, we can't just slam the door in your face and say, this isn't the house you belong in, you gotta go next door. We have to very kindly and gently walk you to the right house. So any, uh, we talk a lot of in this world about no wrong door policy. You can come in any door, but we have to help you get to the right house in a better way than we do today. So we have a lot of work to do in Colorado around our eligibility systems and these relationships and getting people um, into the right house no matter what door they come in. Um, and we have to refer them to other programs. Again, this is not an entitlement program. We're not gonna case manage anybody. And we're not going to um, make people buy things they don't want to buy. But uh, if you came to the exchange and you bought your insurance, let's say your family's at like 150% of poverty or 175% of poverty, we could say to you, you know what, it looks like you might also be eligible for some other programs we have here in Colorado. So with your permission, we'd like to send data that you gave us about your family size and income over to that other house and then they will follow up for you. So it might be food, food stamps is a great example. Some of the low income individuals who are gonna be coming to the exchange to buy their insurance might be eligible for food stamps, what we call SNAP now. So we don't determine that eligibility for food stamps at the exchange, but we need to make sure we, that that person knows they may be eligible, and we need to send them and all the data they already gave us over to the food stamp people so that they don't have to fill out more forms or submit more data. Um, we also have to have a call center. We have to have a world, what is called a world-class, state-of-the-art website and self-service option for people who want to fill, uh, apply and do all their, their research on their own. 
So how many people in this room have used Expedia or Orbitz or Travelocity to buy an airplane ticket? Almost everybody. So think about this. How many of you, when you, re when you retired and you went to the Social Security Administration website, did that online? Anybody? So um, think about Expedia, but only better. So one of the things that I don't like about Expedia, I don't mean to pick on them, or any of those airplane sites, is you're in the middle of picking in your ticket and doing your research and your mother calls and you got to talk to your mom or whoever on the phone and, and you have to stop what you're doing, which means that you have to turn your computer off or you know leave the website and come back later and start all over again. Well, now, if, you've, um, if, if you haven't gone to the Social Security Administration website recently or you're about to, now you can do, you can start filling everything out your mom calls up, you can save your data and come back later. And I think our exchange website needs to be that way too. So that's why I say Expedia only better. So if you get, this is complicated stuff. People will want to take some time to read through it and think about it and make the right choices for the family. They might want to call the customer call center. They may want to call up their broker and have a conversation with their broker or their navigator and then come back the next day and make their decisions and, and go back online and keep filling things out. So we need to build a world-class customer service function on the web so people can do that. Now remember, this is 2014. If you all remember, in, uh, if any of you had a cell phone in uh, 1996 like I did that was about as big as your shoe, um, and we look at what our cell phones can do today, by 2014, most of the, at least the younger people, and some of us more sophisticated older people, they're going to be doing this on their smartphones. They're not even going to be doing it on a desktop. Um, so we have to find out that we have to make sure we design our marketing and our enrollment systems to meet the needs of all of the various populations that are going to be coming to our doors, our customers. For small employers, they, they are used to working with brokers, and we want brokers to continue to help them. They're, they'll be called navigators then, but a broker could become a navigator and help the small employer. For the people just above that poverty line who have never had insurance in their lives, or not for a very long time, and don't really understand it very well, they may need a face-to-face -face community, kind of a traditional outreach community worker to sit down with them and go through all this. For a lot of people in the middle, uh, we'll have a customer service call center, and I can guarantee you it's going to be based in the United States. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, I don't think that's in the bill, but I'm pretty darn sure that would be the intent. Um, and, uh, and people can just get on the phone and ask some questions. So there has to be a nice, broad array of opportunities for people to have a really good experience uh, to get their insurance. So these core functional areas um, that I, and again, this is probably more detail than you want, and I'll just whip through these really fast. One of the things we are doing first is what I call background research. We need to know a little bit more. For any of you in this room who ever started up your own business, you know one of the first things you have to do is understand, have a deep and clear understanding of who your customer is. So we know some things about our customers. That's how we got to the layer cake data. But we need to know a little bit more, uh, what we call more granular data. We need to know, okay, so we know that 60% of the small employers in Colorado don't offer insurance. Well, why is that? What, we need to understand that a little bit more. We know we have all these um, uninsured people, 300,000, in our target income group. You know, what else do we need to know about them? Does gender matter? Does age matter? Does geography matter? So we are embarking and hiring a vendor uh, who can come in and look at the data we have and collect more data and do what we call economic modeling. Um, in the bill, when you go to the exchange to buy your insurance, you will be, your income categories in six, six different buckets because that's what will determine what level of tax credit you get. So we want to know of those 300,000 people in Colorado who are coming to be with us as customers, which of those six buckets do they fall in? Are they all kind of grouped toward the lower income level? Or are they spread out pretty evenly? Because um, that's really important for us to know. We need to know what, how many people are going to get what level of subsidies. So we're working on that um, data right now. Stakeholder engagement is really 
really, really important to us. Last year, after the bill was passed, uh, in the Ritter administration, since we knew we were going to be gone by the, you know, at the end of 2010, 